Hi, welcome to the tenor sax video. My name is Mr. Ablett and I'm going to be your band teacher for this year. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to put the instrument together. Uh, we're going to name all of the parts of the instrument. I'm going to show you how to make first couple of sounds and uh, how to care for the instrument uh, a little bit. So congratulations on choosing the tenor saxophone. Very exciting time. And let's get right into it. Let's start right away. So uh, mouthpiece. This is the way mine showed up in the case. It's got a little plastic bag on it because it's been sterilized. And there's actually three different parts. There is this part, which is the mouthpiece cap. You see that in the lighting I have here? Okay, and this part, which is called the ligature, and the ligature is the clamp that holds the reed on. Okay, now I'm just going to take the mouthpiece out of the plastic bag, put the bag in the garbage, and you'll notice that the ligature is not actually a perfect cylinder. It's actually cone-shaped. There is uh, an, a narrow opening and then a wide opening, okay? So uh, there's a way that the clair that the uh, excuse me the uh, the ligature fits on the mouthpiece, uh, and there's a way that it doesn't. So let me show you. Uh, if it fits on like that, that's the correct way for the ligature to go on the mouthpiece. The screws go on the flat part, the part that has the the opening. If you have it on upside down, it looks like that, and you're like, why doesn't it slide down? Well, because there's a thin there's a narrow opening which goes at the top and a wide opening, which goes at the bottom. That's why. Okay, and you're gonna wanna make sure that the screws of the ligature are facing you. They're on the reed side of the mouthpiece and not on the opposite side. There's other reeds that you might see um, sax players playing online where the screws are on the other side. That's a different kind of ligature. The ligature that you're playing on, the screws have to face you, okay? You'll also see, uh, hopefully, a selection of reeds. Every instrument that you rent comes with a couple of reeds. And you should have a, a supply of your own that you purchased on top of the rental. Okay? So let's pop out one of these reeds, and I'll show you why you need... Come on. Boy, this one's tough to open. Oh, there we go. Open it from the correct end, if that helps. Okay, and this is what a reed looks like in its plastic case. So we pull it out of the case, hang on to this. We're going to use that later on. And this is the vibrating source of a saxophone. See how thin it is? Oh my goodness, it's like as thin as a sheet of paper. Super, super thin. And as you might imagine, it's really easy to break. And if you're uh, holding your saxophone in class and you just somebody says something funny and you turn and it'll catch on your shirt and then it doesn't work it you'll chip it'll crack any kind of um damage to this little tiny piece of bamboo it means no it's just not going to work for you okay so let's um get started by putting this in our mouth and you want to get it all wet now it seems a little gross but um, this thing needs to be damp for it to vibrate properly. I'm going to get both ends. Make sure the thick part of the reed, right down to the core, it's been nice and moist. Okay. Now I'm just going to lay that somewhere clean. I normally wouldn't put it down, but I want to go through the rest of the instrument right now. Once you have it in your mouth, you're best to just put it on the mouthpiece. But I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So uh, just keep that reed inside your mouth right now as we go through the rest of the parts of the saxophone. So we've talked about the mouthpiece so far. Um, another piece of equipment you may have seen inside the case looks like this. And this is the swab. I'll show you how to use this at the end of our time today. Okay, it's basically a cloth with a long string attached to it. And some of them have like a sponge or uh, some of them have like a little wire thingy. I'll explain what that stuff is. I'm just going to get the knot out of here that I just made a mess of. Okay. And if ever you just need to uh, pause the video 
and uh, you know, untie your swab just like I did. Uh, that's okay. So that's your swab. We're gonna use that every day when we finish playing, uh, finish playing the instrument. Okay, set that aside. You've also got one of these, which is a neck strap, okay? And the neck strap holds the weight of the instrument. I don't know anybody that's strong enough to hold a tenor saxophone for an hour at a time with one thumb, because that's what you're gonna have to do if you don't have a neck strap. You gotta make sure you have your neck strap every day. So as part of the ritual of putting the instrument together and putting it away, always make sure your neck strap goes in the case. Okay, but if ever you show up to class and you're like, oh no, I left my neck strap at home because I was practicing, don't be afraid, come and talk to me. Okay, I'll help you out. Okay, so let's put this around our neck right now. And I'll show you how it works. So there's this little hook on the end which attaches to the instrument and holds the weight. So pull on it right now. And you see there's a buckle. If you grab either side of the buckle, you should be able to move the strap up and down just by pulling. If there's a little bit of weight on it, that helps. Okay. And you can make it just the right length for, for you. For me, I have to have the neck strap really long. For you, you probably have to have it halfway or maybe even a little bit tighter. Okay. Something that almost looks like a, a tie that a, that a gentleman would wear. Let me just fix my collar here so I don't look goofy. All right. So um, some students will actually, they'll pull their hood up. I'm gonna pull my collar right up like this because you might do that while you were playing, okay? If they're wearing a hoodie and they wanna put it underneath the hood instead of the hood sort of getting in the way back there, that's okay, all right? So neck strap, super important, check. The next thing is the neck of the saxophone, okay? And finally, oof, the body of the saxophone. Now, when you pull a saxophone out of the case, there is a piece of protective equipment, which I want you to be aware of. And it's a little plastic plug that goes in the end. And what it does is that it protects this little key, which sticks up, called the register key. So I'd like you to remove that and put it in your case. You're gonna use this to protect that key so it doesn't get bent. If you have a bent register key, your sax isn't gonna work. Band. Oops, <laughs> I just dropped it. I'm gonna pick it up and put it in the case. There we go. That, that way I just know where it is and it doesn't get kicked across the band room floor and then you're like, I don't know where it is. I don't know what to do. So with saxophone in hand, let's attach the neck strap to the little hook on the back. Now, whenever I do this, I always have my hands on the saxophone always hanging onto it. I never just let it dangle on the neck strap if I can help it, okay? Uh, because if this little plastic clip fails, how much is this plastic clip worth? I don't know, a penny, maybe? <laughs> maybe five cents, I don't know. Um, then this whole beautiful instrument will crash to the ground. And uh, this thing's worth a lot of money. Uh, but more than that, you're gonna be missing out on band instructional time because your instrument's gonna be in the shop. So let's avoid that if we can. Okay, so holding on to the instrument, we're gonna take the neck and we're going to, without touching this key on top, we're gonna grab it from either side like that. Okay, and we're gonna insert it in the top of the saxophone. Go in there. There we go, slide it all the way down. And then there are two screws here, okay? And one of them is for tightening up the neck so that the neck doesn't go and circle all the way around when you're trying to play. You know, you pick it up and the saxophone goes I've seen that happen before. Um, this one is for uh, marching saxophone, where you put a little music stand called a lyre on the sax. So we're not gonna use that screw, and you don't have to tighten these really tight. You just, nice and snug, it's all you need, just so that the mouthpiece isn't sliding all over the place. Okay, now you can see that the saxophone is kind of pointing at my nose. It's too high. My neck strap is too too high. So I'm gonna grab the buckle and I'm gonna lower it. That's a little bit too low now. It's kind of hitting me in the chin, right? So I'll raise it up just a little bit just by grabbing the buckle on either side, sliding it up and down. So now I can blow right into the aperture of the saxophone. Cool. Now, still holding on. We haven't talked about this bit. 
okay? It's not chapstick, it's cork grease. And cork grease we use for greasing corks, as you might imagine. So this is what I'm gonna do. It looks like chapstick, but it's a lubricant for this cork on your saxophone. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of cork grease all the way around so that my mouthpiece slides on effortlessly. Okay, now, put the cap back on, cork grease goes back in the case, and now it's time, holding onto the saxophone by the bell, I'm going to slide the mouthpiece onto the saxophone. Okay, now we're going to find that it matters how much you slide it on, how far it slides on the cork. Some saxophone players will slide it really far down, some not so much. So slide it on about halfway for now. Uh, and if it's difficult to slide on, you can actually damage the instrument, especially if you grab this part and then you grab the mouthpiece and you That's why we have cork grease, so that you can slide your mouthpiece on there and it's you don't have to damage this beautiful key on top of the saxophone called the register key. Remember that little post? That attaches to this beautiful thing. Okay. Now, finally, we can get to placing the reed on the instrument. This is a really tricky process. Okay. So what we're going to do is that, first of all, the reed should be nice and wet. Hopefully it's been in your mouth the entire time. I'm going to get mine a little bit more wet. so that it doesn't squeak on me. And I'm going to slide it on the mouthpiece. I'll turn my mouthpiece around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna lift up the mouth, the, uh, the ligature, and I'm gonna slide the reed in behind it. Not inside the hole of the mouthpiece, but just on the flat part, the flat face of the mouthpiece. Okay, so you should have something that looks like that at this point. So the reed has to be perfectly straight up and down. It also it can't be too high and it can't be too low. Let me take the mouthpiece off just so that I can demonstrate for the camera a little more effectively. I'm gonna take my saxophone off too. Put it down on my chair. Normally in band class, whenever we put our instrument down, we put it down on the floor so that it can't fall off of it the table or the chair or the music stand or whatever we're trying to do. Always put your instrument right flat on the floor. Okay, so uh, putting the reed on the mouthpiece. Well, let me show you how to do it wrong. See how it's crooked? It can't be even a centimeter off. Okay, it has to be really, really close to where it just needs to live. It needs to be nice and straight. Um, the ligature can't be too high. If the ligature is sitting up above this ridge right here along the back of the mouthpiece, sometimes the screws are too tight and it sits like that, that's not going to work. You're gonna to have to loosen off the screws. And what I do is that I put my thumb on the bottom screw and I pull down. That way my other hand can adjust the reed. Now, my reed is nice and straight, but it's not in the right position. It's not long enough to touch the tip of the mouthpiece. And so it's not gonna make a sound, it probably won't make a sound at all. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to loosen off the screws and I'm going to push just gently, gently, moving it a millimeter at a time. I can feel it just going boop, 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 moving up. And then what I do is that I push on the reed itself. And if it's wet, you should be able to look right through the reed and see the black tip of the mouthpiece. And it should just touch, okay? If it sticks up too much, it's gonna be wackadoodle. And if it doesn't reach, it's not gonna make any sound at all. Now, I'm gonna tighten that down. And you don't see me going, right? Don't be too strong with those, just nice and firm, about equal for each of the screws on the ligature. Cool, you good to go? Now, let's try making a sound just on the mouthpiece. It's gonna sound funny. Okay, be forewarned, all mouthpieces sound like this. So you wanna put about half of the mouthpiece inside your mouth. Okay, again, nice wet reed. With your teeth right on top of the mouthpiece, 
you don't have to dig your teeth in or anything like that. Mainly it's just uh, more about making a nice airtight seal around the, the reed and the mouthpiece. And it should sound like this. Can you make that sound? Now, if you're making a different sound, a different note than what I'm playing, try adjusting uh, either put a little bit more reed inside your mouth, a little bit less maybe. See if you can find the sweet spot where the reed loves to live and make sound. Okay, if you're squeaking, <coughs> making weird sounds like that, it probably means you have too much reed inside your mouth. And if it sounds all sandy and weird, <coughs> or high like that, that's because I don't have enough reed inside my mouth and the reed is freaking out and doesn't know how to vibrate. About half of the reed. And you can see my mouth is very firm. This is what we call an embouchure. An embouchure is the formation of our mouths for playing a musical instrument. Okay, and for tenor saxophone, you should have a nice flat chin like this. You should have a little bit of a smile and some dimples. You don't have to have like, you don't have to like squeeze really hard, uh, but it should be nice and firm so that you can make a big, beautiful sound. Okay, let's put our mouthpiece down just for a moment. Grab our saxophone by the edge of the bell, just like that. Other hand goes here. Being careful of these keys, we don't want to bend them. Okay, and we'll just attach our neck strap, okay? And I'll show you where to put your fingers. Oh, let's put our, no, I'm gonna wait on the mouthpiece. I'll do that in a minute. That way we won't get it caught on our shirts. Okay, so on the back, you have this black circle. It doesn't do anything. It's just a place for you to put your, your thumb, okay? And then uh, later on, you're gonna be using this key. That's the register key that operates that beautiful key on the top of the saxophone. Okay, see how it works? Super cool. Now, your left hand goes on the top and your right hand goes on the bottom. Left on top, right on the bottom. Okay. Now, there's a bunch of keys for your left hand. You'll see that my index finger has a gold-colored key above it and a little white key below it that's small. You're going to press that first white key right there. Okay, we're not going to use that key for now. Then your next finger goes there, next finger goes there, and your pinky is going to do all of those keys on the flat squares there. Okay, so again, right below that little teardrop key there goes first finger, skip that one, next finger goes there, next finger goes there. Your right thumb goes on, you can't see it from that angle, let's go here. Your right thumb goes on the black thumb rest on the back of the saxophone. That's your right hand. Now, it's just the tip of your thumb. Your whole thumb doesn't need to go through it. In fact, you won't be able to play the instrument properly if you do that. Just the end of your thumb, just the last knuckle. And that helps you to control the instrument when you are playing it and you'll be able to move it around. Now. Okay, so your right hand, there's only three keys. One, two, three. And that's where your right hand goes. And then Pinky does those two. Okay, so let's look at the left hand again. Thumb on the black circle. One, two, three. Right hand, one, two, three. Awesome. Now, with the saxophone sort of level to the ground, okay, let's put our right hand on it and hang on. If you're sitting down to practice, that's okay. I often sit down to practice, that's all right. Today I'm standing up because, you know what, I just find standing up solves a lot of the problems that musicians struggle with. Posture is huge in band. So the way you sit and the way that you stand has an impact on your sound and your achievement in band. Okay, so I'm standing up just to avoid any kind of problems. Now you can see my saxophone is let me see if I can change the angle here. My saxophone is just to the to the right of my body. It sort of sits on my right hip. Okay. 
so that when I play the instrument, you can see it's on a bit of an angle because that's the way the instrument is built. Okay, so with no fingers down, adjust the mouthpiece so that the reed slides in your mouth quite easily, no problem at all. Can you make that sound? No fingers pressed down, go ahead. First me, then you. Your turn. My turn. Your turn. Let's try pressing down some keys and see what happens. Having your fingers in the right spot. What happens if we press more keys? The sound goes down, doesn't it? And you can have some fun playing the different notes on the saxophone. Always remember to play with a beautiful sound when you're playing. Do the best sound you can every time you pick up the instrument. Because if you don't have a nice sound, it doesn't matter what you can do on the instrument. It's not going to sound nice, right? You can play super fast, but if you have a sound like a chainsaw or a laser beam, that's not going to be very good. It'd be like, well, I can play really fast, but oof, you know, whoa. So, um, Let's um, leave it there for today. Let's put our instrument back uh, in its case. I'll show you how to do that. If you want to continue practicing, of course, by all means, do that. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to remove the reed. So I'm going to loosen off the ligature. Pull the reed up and through. Now remember that little piece of plastic that the reed came in? Well, that's where we want to store the reed because the reed will dry out before your next practice session and it'll resist getting moldy. If your reed is ever turning black, throw it out immediately and start on another reed. Okay, super important that you're playing on a clean piece of equipment. All right, now put your reed inside your case. You can remove your mouthpiece. Again, you can see I'm hanging onto my saxophone the whole time. I'm going to put it back inside the mouthpiece cap and then it goes inside my case. I'm going to remove the neck. Again, being careful of that octave key, the register key. I'm not pushing on it with my fist and squeezing it. Put that back in the case. Now, where did it go? There we go. There's our piece of protective equipment. So it protects the register key. Remove the neck strap saxophone. I'm just going to place it down for a moment um, so that I can remember to put my neck strap back in my case. Don't want to forget that. Now, I did say that I would go through um, cleaning the instrument when we're done. Okay, so let's pop that little guy out. I'll just put it on my music stand. And uh, we're going to use our swab. So the swab is essentially just a regular cloth and it's got a little piece of foam inside so that it will actually touch the inside of the larger tubes of the saxophone. And it's got a long string so that you can thread it all the way through properly and a weight on the end so it makes it easy. So I'm gonna put it in the end of the saxophone. Okay, and then I'm just gonna work it out the bottom. There we go. Turn the saxophone around and the swab comes right out. Okay, so now what we're going to do, essentially the swab is there just to um, pull all the water away from the inside of the instrument. Because it's metal, I'm gonna pull nice and slow so that it soaks up all the water. The instrument is metal and your breath is going to condense on the inside of the instrument. It's not saliva, as you can see, there it goes, and it cleans out the inside for you. It's not saliva, it's just condensation, it's just water that condenses on the inside. 
And so we want to make sure that we protect all of these beautiful pads on the saxophone that make the instrument sound so beautiful. And that's how we do it. All right, so I'm going to put that back in its case. And I'm going to wrap up my swab just like that. And one um, thing that my students, I always have a couple of students that do this every year. They finish everything, they follow all the instructions properly, they put it in the case, they close the lid, and then they pick it up. <laughs> the instrument goes crash all over the floor and it has to go into the repair shop. Make sure you're locking your case every time you put the instrument away, okay? Don't just close the lid and pick it up and everything goes flying. Okay, so you've made it through the very first day of tenor saxophone, good for you. There's gonna be some other videos for you to watch on how to get through the first couple of notes on the instrument and how to use a metronome, that kind of stuff. I'll explain all that one in the next video. But good for you for tuning in. Thanks for being here. And I hope you have fun in band this year. Bye.